Yoski uh, today an even more unscripted video if you can believe that it is possible it actually is I've just finished a project which involves this thing and uh, yeah we'll see how it goes if everything goes not totally catastrophically we're gonna end this with a nice uh, science experiment so yeah you know a hot plate well this is actually a magnetic steerer, it even says so, with heating as an additional function. And you know, the problem with those kinds of devices is that the easily available ones are lab grade and they have lab grade prices, which in my use case makes absolutely no sense to spend so much money on something that's only going to be used only sporadically. So I found this stupid thing, it's a Chinese uh, crappy knockoff, I guess it has a thousand names which do not mean anything. But yeah, German Amazon, this was reasonably priced, I do not care at all about the magnetic steering thing, I don't even think I've ever used it, I don't even think that I've tested that it works, I care so little about it. But the heating, the heating seems to be working and uh, if you're wondering what's the main difference between this and your sort of uh, like a camping kitchen hot plate, well I would say the fact that the actual plate where you put your stuff is flat instead of uh, like having a texture or anything like that. And in theory the heating should be more precise, but again this is a cheapo thing. In any case with that intro, well the tweaks I've done to it, this white uh, whiteout marks here uh, again this is like uh, if you can even see this stuff apologies as i said this is all as we go so yeah the mark here and another one here because those stupid knobs you see you have this weird marking just well it's it's just poor design in terms of marking because you think this goes from here to there no it actually stops here and then goes all the way like after the mark but i mean redeeming quality it does have this nice click so at least you have positive feedback that the thing is off and it also has an additional like a master switch for the on of action and yeah i mean it has supposedly supposedly it has a fuse haven't looked into that a standard iec connector so it's supposed to be grounded also haven't us tested that i'm not big life so you know i just care about the main thing that i want to be working so in any case the one tweak here super simple stuff another i would call it a tweak as well so i've done some tests with it and i've put the information on this because again i'm not going to be using this eight hours a day every day so what's the max temp after 10 minutes and a reminder to myself and everybody else that it was measured unloaded and with no airflow, you know, it's like measuring the voltage of batteries when they're not doing anything. You're always going to get higher voltage than when they're actually trying to do something, which is why a proper battery tester is not just a voltmeter. It's a thing that has loads, hopefully can switch a couple of different loads, you know, do some basic arithmetic and then give you a measurement. But anyways, that was a tangent. Um, I think last thing about hot plates is that, uh, apologies, I should have started with this unmounted. So you do have this sort of a rod thing uh, for, I would say, standard lab attachments, like things for uh, keeping like rods in place or maybe even like a flask or whatever. This one comes in, you know, this uh, probably steel thing in two pieces, it screws together to form a longer one. And it's slotted on one end so you know it doesn't actually rotate when you put it in the holder here let's see so yeah you saw yeah there's a, like a matching slot now this was so little quality of so little quality that i actually had to grind this slot with my drummer because it was like again like really nasty and it wasn't even like fitting in properly but yeah in any case that's the machine three tweaks into that but this is not the project the project well let's first assemble it okay and even be so brave and get the connected 
power cable plugged in. Yeah, no. So you have a chance of seeing the. So if you turn it on, the. Okay, yeah, master switch. It's there for a reason. When you turn it on, you actually do have. You know, there is a light. Now it's gone because it's off. So nice touch and good that at least such basic things work. Now on to my project. My project is in a plastic bag, as it should be. It's uh, this sort of uh, randomness here. And what it is, is, uh, well, you've seen that there is like no temperature control, there is not even a thermometer here. So I've made my own. And by made my own, I mean all the additional stuff that go with a thermometer, because the actual thing is the for me quite standard because they are cheap and useful this sort of automotive uh, thermometer which has uh, and yeah this is this is the main part of the project this is the thermocouple of the thermometer itself and what i've done is this holding solution so i found a piece of brass i would call it the bushing but i have no idea just like a piece of brass that's uh, fitting the shaft and you can see the idea of, of this here that even if you put something in you can you know like just put it down so brass shafting a steel rod and i know exactly where this one came from because i took it out on my own from a hard drive it was like a sled sled thing for uh, for something in any case part of a hard drive then this bit here uh, i have no idea what it is um, you know random bits and bobs it's metal it has an unthreaded uh, hole in this direction and then one threaded hole on top and another one on another side but like crisscross so this one on the right this one's on the left uh, I have no idea. I mean, it's not doesn't look like the sort of an electric thing where you put wire from one side and another from a, from the other side and just screw it together. Maybe it is that. If you were to ask me to bet, I would bet that this is part of some furniture thing from 70s or earlier. Uh, happens to fit the shaft here quite nicely. I found the screw that fits, so basically this is screwed now so that the probe is at the end, but obviously you can unscrew it and move the probe, you can rotate it. So I really like this design, it took some time to maybe not even figure it out, but like collect the parts and rather see what parts I have and what is the best solution that I can come up with. And this is uh, the thing. And you know, some basic zip types for uh, cable management because still the flexibility is an important point here. And yeah, I mean, the shaft, I've drilled a hole in this uh, round thing by hand, obviously, I'm getting better at that. And this fits in, almost friction fit, but not enough, so I've added some polyurethane glue, um, because I also wanted this, you know, like, if you're gonna be, like, slamming this down to have some, like, vibration dampening. And yeah, this hasn't been used properly yet, so we'll see how long it survives. But yeah, and then you have a cable, and this weird stability, it's a, it's a drinking straw, just a cut on a, a pencil sharpener into this sort of a, well, a ribbon, basically. A ribbon spring, like, yeah, ribbon, ribbon spring, yeah, so as you can actually buy like the proper ones, but the idea, for this stuff is that it helps with like cable management once this is set. So yeah, let me put the probe down. And now for the thermometer, the idea is to have it, you know, somewhere here where you can see it. And uh, what I thought about, well, my idea here was glue in a small neodymium magnet and then use a small binder. You know, really simple, nothing fancy. Yeah. I will actually show you the setup with it, but as you can see, this is dead now because I took the batteries out. You know, just not to drain them when the thing is not in use. So yeah, let's address that.
Now it's on. And that uh, looks like an over temperature, like I don't think this is actually 28. But anyways, this again, there's nothing here is love great. So we don't have to care that much. Uh, do you have any chance of seeing that? Well, very little. Apologies, but basically the magnet goes here. And then you tie the wire around and it should hold it just enough for it to be useful. Oh, I can actually read it on camera, that's great. And yeah, as easy as that, as you can see. And yeah, again, the, this uh, drinking straw thingy here should help with the cable management here. Though the idea is that normally I would have it like as far up as possible because, uh, you know, I don't want to burn this stuff and uh, this is supposed to be used but to actually hit other things, not just to demo it. But yeah. Let's redo it the last time. Fumble, fumble. Okay, somewhere in the middle, obviously this is a cheap thing, so no one should be expecting for the whole, whole plate to have exactly the same temperature, it's probably has just like a resistive element, like a spiral, so it's not going to be even, but the plate probably, you know, works good enough. In any case, what we want to do, we want to do the science experiment, for that we need this to heat up, and again this will take... 10 minutes if we're lucky. So I'm gonna turn it on and start the timer here. And I guess I'll cut to when we're ready, but yeah. Let's put it on. And let's just prove to ourselves that, the, that both the thermometer and the hot plate is actually working. So yeah, now time for some silence. It seems to be working, and we are at 39 seconds. I guess I'm gonna like hit the milestone at 50 and I've obviously forgot to get one thing that's necessary for it. Well, for the science experiment. Let's get it now, but let's not make it obvious yet, just yet. Oh yeah, it was supposed to be the airflow. Airflow deleted. Fifty degrees, two minutes, uh, thirty, well about two and a half minutes. Which, if it's actually gonna take ten minutes, means this is non-linear. And getting halfway there takes only quarter of the time.
Yes, it's like watching paint dry. <coughs> Apologies. I'm not dying, don't worry, not yet. Is this going to work faster than the previous two measurements? This is maxed out. Interesting. Can I think of any difference? I really cannot. But don't worry, we've not done yet. And yeah, the camera positioning isn't perfect for our science experiment, but then again, nothing here is perfect. So at least the film is the same. We're consistent in our capacity. Capacity for capacity. That's we have a lot of that. Five minutes, seventy-nine degrees centigrade. That's uh, not safe to touch anymore. See if I can nudge you a bit. thermometer again it's super cheap i think it boxes out at 110 degrees and then it will just show like x's which is kind of neat i mean in terms of user interface much better than the knobs here seven minutes 96 We're gonna run it for them 10 minutes and see what happens. 98.8, 99.1, the race is on.
hundred at eight minutes. That's like what twenty percent, uh, you know, whatever. It's ten minutes. Just leave it for ten minutes. It's gonna get hot. Which is not great, but also not bad. I mean, hundred degrees. Well, uh, maybe it's just not good. Because the question here is really what's the thermal capacity of this thing. I would assume not much of it. And what I mean is like, it's nice that it's 105, but you have to put like a beaker with water, it will immediately drop to like half of that. Because it doesn't have much heat capacity and the element itself is extra crappy, so... Yeah, it says on the side of it that it's like 80 watts. Haven't measured it yet, I actually have it connected to the local variety of a kilowatt, but uh, I cannot check it without like having to go that way, so like covering your view. I will check it later, I mean it's not gonna go anyway. Anyways, we're one minute from 10 minutes and it's 107.8 to be precise. I mean, do you actually trust the digit after the point yeah. 30 seconds but you know now when I think about it I put it 108 not a hundred so for 108 those 10 minutes I mean we're not 10 minutes yet but it's just like a not even oh Okay, so 110, triple X. Okay, let's just be patient. Okay, science experiment time. Yay! Oh, this one's nice. This one's not nice. Much better. Very good. <laughs> I mean, it's mesmerizing and, it, you know, it makes a lot more... Uh, it's a lot more enjoyable. Okay, I broke it. <laughs> And you do it in person, but uh, in any case, that's a laden frost effect, if I believe correctly. So basically, this is uh, distilled water, and uh, if you're going to do it uh, at home, yeah, distilled water will be better because it's not gonna be like leaving any residue. Your tap water, depending whether it's hard water or soft water, you know, hard water has minerals in it so they have to go somewhere which in this kind of a experiment they will go on to your hot surface but yeah uh, you can read about your latent frost effect it's uh, you know um, liquid turning into gas uh, so fast that uh, it actually prevents the rest of the liquid uh, from getting really hot it's really cool satisfying yes that's that's the word well, Maybe let's try to do some better videography. Sorry. Yeah, probably. Dancing spheres of water. Yeah, I think smaller ones. Uh. Oh, and one thing I found out uh, empirically is that you, you need this, uh, like the hot surface to be clean. And by clean, I mean uh, like finger grease, stuff like that. It's uh, going to interfere with this. All right, enough of this uh, science fun. 
<laughs> I certainly hope that this single 25 minute unscripted, unthought about cut is going to be good enough <laughs> to be actually useful. Uh, let's see what's the temperature in the middle. About 100. In any case, the main point of the of what I'm you know, like trying to share is this sort of an, uh, thermometer probe. Ah, it's hot. <laughs> would have fought it. <laughs> All right. In any case, uh, thank you for watching. Bye. B-roll.